Two of the greatest sleuths in history meet each other in one universe to find out which of them is the best detective. Hercule Poirot and Sherlock Holmes are going to investigate the theft of an antique statue from a wealthy household. After watching their investigations, we will determine the winner. Let's start with public influence. So, Belgian detective Hercule Poirot is the man in the right corner of the room, asking witnesses about the missing statue. British writer Agatha Christie wrote about his adventures from the 20s to the 70s of the previous century. The writer released over 30 novels, dozens of short stories, and two plays. Detective Poirot appeared on radio, in movies, and on television. He was played by dozens of different actors, and Hollywood is still interested in adapting the adventures of Hercule Poirot. Creating Poirot, Agatha Christie was inspired by Sherlock Holmes. But Hercule is his complete opposite. In the left corner of the room, we have Sherlock Holmes, looking for footprints on the floor, using his magnifying glass and measuring something with a ruler. British author Arthur Conan Doyle released the first Sherlock Holmes story in 1887. By the 90s of the previous century, tens of thousands of plays, movies, television series, and publications had been created about Sherlock Holmes. There are hundreds of fan communities, video games, board games, and role-playing games. Sherlock Holmes entered the Guinness Book of Records as the most portrayed literary character in movies and on television. Obviously, Sherlock Holmes has much more influence worldwide than Hercule Poirot. Now, physical parameters. Yeah, the brain is more important to a good detective than muscles. But who would win if Poirot and Holmes faced off in a fair fight? So, Sherlock Holmes is a tall boxer who can bend an iron poker with his hands. He rarely showed his strength because he considered his brain the true power. But sometimes, he had to fight bad guys and they couldn't stand up. At the same time, Holmes is careless, sometimes rude, ignores the mess in his room and neglects his physical condition. He has bad habits and likes to starve to make his brain work at full capacity. Also, he can spend the whole day sitting in a chair or lying on the couch without moving. In addition, he's a master violinist and a lover of practical experiments in chemistry. In any case, his strong muscles and boxing skills make him a dangerous opponent in this fight. Hercule Poirot is the exact opposite. He is small in stature doesn't participate in fights, dresses exquisitely, and cares about his health. The detective is selective in food and avoids heavy physical exertion. Instead of working in the field and chasing robbers, he prefers to sit in a chair and think. He loves luxurious hotel rooms and carefully chooses his outfit. He's obsessed with cleanliness and doesn't allow a speck of dust to fall on his coat. He's annoyed by carelessness and dirt, and he hates brute force. His roundish physique speaks of a lack of physical strength. Apparently, in a duel, Sherlock Holmes would clearly win. Now, let's move on to the main part. Detective skills. There's no doubt that Sherlock Holmes is a brilliant detective. He pays attention to the smallest detail and uses deduction and logic to solve any case. He has a phenomenal memory and attentiveness. But evidence interests him more than people's motives. Every case is a puzzle game for him. His favorite way of investigating is to collect various clues and think about them while playing the violin. He also has a network of informants among thieves and orphans who inform him about what happens on the streets. However, his weak side is human characters. He's bad at understanding the psychology of people and their emotions, and he may not understand their motives. In the case of the lost statue, he can see the details other people don't pay any attention to. Then he can find the thief using this information. He looks at where the statue was placed, studies photos featuring it, calculates its length and width, and finds some marble crumbs. He sees scratches on the floor from the heavy square pedestal where the unique sculpture once stood. 
thinks a little and solves the crime. The robbers couldn't get the statue out of the room because it was too wide. The sculpture fell and broke into fragments and marble crumbs. Then the thief put the figure in a bag and took it out of the room. And the cook working in this house was the one who did it. Holmes knows that since he noticed white marks from marble dust on the cook's shoes. Let's see how Hercule Poirot solves this case. His method of research is the total opposite of Holmes. He prefers to avoid looking for clues, walking around with a magnifying glass, and measuring footprints on the ground. His method of investigation is communication with witnesses and suspects. Hercule Poirot is well-versed in characters, understands people's motives, reads emotions, and uses psychological tricks. Unlike Holmes, this detective relies on intuition, not logic. He can solve the mystery with the help of one interview where he asks unexpected questions. Poirot attentively watches the reaction of his interlocutors. He studies their psychological profiles and determines the motives for theft. He is an experienced psychologist, ready to eavesdrop on people's conversations to better understand their nature. He can also pretend to be ignorant or stupid to make a false impression on a person and then catch them red-handed. Therefore, in the case of the missing statue, he's not going to look for footprints and marble crumbs on the floor. He will communicate with all the house residents and learn about the details of their lives. He meets the governess, the hostess, the young son, and the cook. For example, he sees that the cook is educated and intelligent. He wouldn't steal the statue without knowing how to take it out of the house. Besides, he loves working there. The governess is too weak to drag the statue across the room. The owner's son is a real bully. He constantly creates problems. And last night, according to the governess, he broke into the house and smashed the statue. This guy's mom, the house owner, is in shock. She's unsure that her son did it, but admits he's problematic. After a moment's thought, Poirot realizes that the cook tried to steal the statue and then broke it. He loves the owner and wants to turn her against her son because the guy doesn't like the cook. He framed him when the son came home late. The cook broke the statue and put the pieces in the son's room. The case is solved. Both Poirot and Holmes have done an excellent job. Sherlock wins because of his popularity and physical characteristics. But as detectives, they are both equally good with their different investigating methods. But wait, if you were the partner of one of them, who would you choose? Sherlock can be an exciting but complicated friend. Chemical experiments in the room, unpredictable behavior, bad habits, and complete chaos in his living space. Besides, he doesn't like hanging out with people. Parties tire him. Meeting with friends seems boring. All he wants to do is load his brain with work. It's cool, but you might be tired of such a chaotic working style. Hercule Poirot loves pleasant company, good rest, and delicious food. He'll happily chat with you on any topic, help you choose a stylish suit, and make great company at any party. But remember that he can study and analyze you. Would you like that? Besides, you never know when Hercule is sincere with you and when he's not. During investigations, he won't do dirty work. He will carefully study all the defendants in the case and then think about their motives while drinking his coffee. On the one hand, you may get bored with such an approach, especially if you like adventures. But on the other hand, a conversation with such a skilled interlocutor can be incredibly fascinating. So, both detectives are excellent literary characters. Let's hope that such people exist in real life and act on the bright side.